Welcome back, Zero K fans, to Natalie Zedon. I remain your host, Shadow Fury 333, and this next match is going to be considerably simpler than the last one. It's going to be a 1v1. So, so that was me against Exploits. Exploits! I'm gonna keep saying that, aren't I? Anyway, Sav, it's me going for the Hovercraft Factory. Exploit, on the other hand, going for the Light Vehicle Factory. And Exploit starting out with a couple of darts. Fairly typical start. Yeah, darts, Mason, into Scorcher. That's fairly typical. A few more darts than I would have expected, though. I guess they're anticipating an early raid. I'm not sure why the one dart's staying at home, but no matter. Dagger's coming in from Sav, it's me at the same time, which is, once again, kind of typical. And I do find an interesting exploit started out in the center. I always point this out on Red Comet, because Red Comet is a map where you can start out basically anywhere along the eastern or western sides, depending on the team you're on. But if you're on the eastern side, the northeast, or the western side, the southwest, it's kind of the more defensible position. You only have the corner. There's only a couple of ways you can be attacked. There's one like small arc you can be attacked from. It's not usually that big of a deal. Although, speaking of which, exploit's coming in, imme exploit coming in immediately... And taking out a metal extractor for free if that dart actually does get away, which it might. It should be, able, yeah, it will be able to outpace the daggers, so it's good. Anyway, starting in the northeast is more defensible than the center, even though the center actually gives you better access to the northwest and southwest. So essentially, or northeast and southeast in the case of the eastern side. So basically the idea is in the center, you're, you're kind of risking that your opponent will attack you from more angles. But at the same time, you're able to set up more effectively the entire side. Like, it's easier to defend the entire side you start on, it's just harder to defend at the very, very, very start of the game. That being said, Savage Me, we kind of see that is not necessarily true, because they just lost a Metal Extractor for nothing. Now, of course, the Scorcher is going in for its death, so it... I mean, it might be able to deal some damage. The dagger is taking a little bit of a roundabout route to get to it, so it might actually be able to take care of this Metal Extractor, but no, no it doesn't, it should have kept moving. Had it done so, it would have been able to take out all the power plants, or at least shut down the power plants briefly, which wouldn't have been a huge deal right now. Savage Me wouldn't have accessed or anything, but it would have been annoying. Actually, I think it would have slowed down the production a little. No, it wouldn't have. There's enough storage and energy. Yeah, it wouldn't have been a terrible idea, but it wouldn't have been especially effective either. Still, Exploit at this point is doing pretty okay, but Savage Me has actually won in terms of attrition. They've rebuilt the metal extractors. They're slightly ahead in economy. They have managed to deal a bit more metal damage, though at this stage in the game it's not a huge deal. So, this dagger swarm coming in here onto the Scorchers is actually going to have a bit of an easy time. The Scorchers are, should be one shot. I believe it's seven and one shot at Scorcher. Actually, no, it's less than that. What am I thinking? It's five. Yeah, because these things deal 100 damage each. So, yeah, it's five to get rid of the Scorcher. It's going to be easy for a group of 10 to do so. That being said, the Lotus in the base should be able to stop a couple of the daggers in the process, especially since the daggers are not line moving in. Why must you not line move? Line move, line move, drag and line move. You could have a much better position on these daggers, especially since you wouldn't be near the Scorchers when you're doing that or in each other's way. Uh, why do people not know line moves a thing? Like, it could have been line, line, and then line, and then just push in as a big line. Uh, it frustrates me I have to keep saying this. I thought that was like something that was obvious for the way the game was taught, or the tutorial system or something. It's not in the tutorials it needs to be, because my goodness, line move. No, I'm talk not talking about the Scorchers. People are thinking I'm talking about the Scorchers. The daggers, it they will not shoot through each other if they are in each other's way. You will not get as much firepower if the daggers are in a bunch. And any other unit against daggers doesn't want to be in a bunch if it can't help it because the daggers line splash them. So, yeah, I stick by what I'm saying. You want to keep the daggers close, but you want to keep them in a position where they can all fire at once. Not moving in a line, not moving in a straight line one at a time towards the opponents. That's never a good idea in an RTS game. Ever. And no, okay, people are arguing in the chat about daggers. No, daggers do not shoot through each other. No unit with a direct fire attack shoots through each other. That doesn't happen. Daggers do have a relatively small width, so they often have opportunities to shoot through the gaps between the lines through 
the space between each other, but not through each other. If they did that, they'd kill each other. Like, that's always the thing in Zero K. Friendly fire is a thing. Daggers will not shoot if they were going to kill each other. And actually, they still sometimes kill each other because sometimes they get in the way of each other's projectiles as the projectiles are firing. Anyway, that aside, Savage Me taking quite a bit of the economy over to the southeast, accessing a huge amount, though. They need way more energy to work with this. Like, they are 30 metal, 23 energy. More energy is not required if they want to actually make use of that metal. Not to mention more build power in their main base is required to make use of that metal. Halberds are a good choice, though. I like that. Not sure why they're just sitting there taking damage, but, I mean, it keeps Exploits Commander from doing anything, I suppose. But yeah, I like the Halberds. That's a good option. The Scorchers, however, are the counter to Halberds. There are too many Halberds for the Scorchers to easily deal with, but with enough Scorchers, like, by cost, that will deal with the Halberds. Still, Exploits Commander is heavily threatened. I don't think it's going to go down, especially with the Scorchers here to defend, but it might just... It will, actually, just barely. Exploit losing their commander, losing all their storage at the same time. As a result, accessing a bunch of metal themselves. Savage Me also going to lose their commander if they're not careful here. Looks like they might be able to... No, they're not. Their commander's dead, too. So both commanders go down. Savage Me losing all that stored metal. I mean, their metal energy gap is a bit smaller. No, it's actually bigger. What am I thinking? The energy loss was way larger. So at this point, both players will need to set up some storage. I don't see either one actually going for it. That is the thing to bear in mind. If you lose your commander, you lose your storage. Or at least you lose 500 metal worth of storage, which is your starting storage. So, at this point, exploit quite a bit behind economically, actually. The one saving grace for them... No, never mind. There's no saving grace. Zavitz Me has quite a bit when it comes to their production capacity. Exploit, on the other hand... Actually, exploit about the same way, but exploit has nowhere near the energy... Zavitz Me actually with a much better health, much healthier energy economy than I'd expected. They are building up enough energy here that they did manage to basically deal with what they were dealing with. That I was saying, hey, you need more energy. They were making more energy. I like that. Exploit, on the other hand, they were making energy, but more on the front line, so it didn't quite work out as well, especially with the loss of their commander. Still, they should be able to get that back up in a fairly short time. At this point, though, Savage Me actually has quite the timing to get in here. As long as they can... Oh, if they had static defenses, this would have been far easier. Or at least send one or two halberds back. Not the entire army, just send one or two back, and then deal with that. Hey, this is a common mistake I see a lot of players do, actually, is they'll send... Oh, granted, like I said, halberds are countered by Scorchers, so... Tricky to do that, but yeah. This is a common thing I see a lot of players do, is send your entire army back to defense, rather than having one group for defense and one other group for offense. Because you don't need to send your entire army back to defend against one small raid. You need, like, one or two units to defend, or you need static defenses. But you don't need your entire army. Just a couple units will do the trick. That's fine. That's all you need. And then you can push forward on the front lines, because Exploit at this point had plenty of time to build up what they needed to build up. And at this point, their energy economy is very healthy. And Savage Me, they could rush in with the Halberds. They have no issues right now. If they rush in with the Halberds, they're going to be able to deal probably a crippling blow, actually, if not a killing blow. Exploit's got hardly anything on the field. So at this point, the, well, the Halberds here should be able to tear apart everything. I just don't know why Savage Me isn't going for it. Like, Savage Me is in a very strong position right now, but it's getting decreasingly strong. Exploit is managing to set up everything they need. They're managing to set up all their metal extractors. They're managing to set up all their defenses. Savage Me is getting... Most of their economy off of Overdrive and Reclaim, not really expanding very much either. And this Halberd force is, like, this is going to be devastating. This is 2,600 metal worth of units against basically nothing. Exploit has no army right now. They had no army because they lost, they had no energy. They couldn't build anything other than energy structures. Savage Me, going for it, they're still in a pretty good timing window. Not ideal, but still probably good enough. As long as the Halberds are careful in how they play. Actually, come to think of it, maybe it is too late. Well, the Halberds certainly aren't attacking. Going straight for the Mason. That's not a bad choice. At this point, though, trying to figure out good targets is... wise? But... kind of delayed. Like, okay, I get it. You want to get targets and maybe don't want to necessarily hit the Ravagers head-on, but there's so many here. Like, you could go for the Ravagers head-on. It's You'll deal enough damage. As long as you circle around the Ravagers... 
Because the halberds need to bring all the halberds to bear. Unless, if they don't, then there's no point having that many halberds. And actually, yeah, that kind of happened. Still broke open the side a bit, but... Yeah, that that's a thing. Like, units cannot shoot through each other. That is a rule of the game. Units cannot shoot through each other. They can shoot over each other, but halberds do not shoot over each other. At this, at any rate, even though the halberds are only at like half pa or half power and getting hit very hard, yeah, okay, uh, the halberds are kind of not working, especially not the way they're being used. The halberds could work here; it's just that they can't work if they're bunched up. Like, arguably, daggers can work if they're bunched up because they can shoot through the gaps between each other. Halberds do not have such gaps. Still, Sabbath's me managing to deal quite a bit of damage. Is losing the attrition war, but managing to get rid of a few masons here and there. They have plenty of territory available to them if they were building it. Their quills, unfortunately, not building up what they need to. Like, there's... There is a quill that's setting up after the reclaim, so that's something. It's just... There's another quill that's totally idle. That's another thing. I mean, I'm pointing out... I'm being critical right now, just so you know, because Sabbath Me asked me to go through this replay to kind of give an idea of what they were doing or what they could have been doing. And yeah, the two big tips I'd say is... Oh, hey, line move. Good. All right, we are seeing some of that. But yeah, the two big tips are make sure that your units, especially halberds, like kind of slower, more well, slow damage units, like they aren't actually dealing a lot of hits at once, and they're more dependent on the alpha, which is actually true of daggers as well. Make sure that they can all bring their guns to bear at once. That'll help a ton. Also, make sure you don't have idle units, which they are kind of doing. That's a big part of it. And the only other thing I can think of is... Strike while the iron's hot. Like, if you just destroyed your opponent's commander, that's probably not a bad time to at least double-check if they have anything in their main base they can come at you with. Because Savage Me had a much healthier energy economy than Exploit did, and I think that was mostly because Exploit, they were on the front lines. Their energy was on the front lines, and Savage Me, they had their energy in the back and in the southeast. So, Savage Me did have a much healthier energy situation. Also, like I said, bring all your units to bear. Actually, at this point, no. Don't even go for halberds. This is this is not a frontline force anymore. This is a raider force. This is a go around the sides, take out metal extractors, force exploit back. Force exploit to tra chase you into their own base. That's the kind of force this is. Like, 15 halberds? Yeah, this would be able to wreck everything but this group in front. This is the only thing that these halberds basically can't deal with easily. They can deal with them at great cost to themselves, or they could deal with the rest of the map, at no cost to themselves. And I mean the rest of the map. Exploit is actually getting an absolutely ridiculous amount of power here. Not to mention, these wind generators are adjacent, so they will explode into each other. Like, that's... That is death to everything around them. And indeed, that's what Savage Me was going for. I don't understand why they're not going for this. Halberds are perfect for backdoor raids. Also, I don't understand why they're not going for... Well, scalpels, mainly. Brawler is coming in here, though that will be able to get rid of most of the Ravagers pretty effectively. Actually, with the Ravagers being forced to split up quite a bit, they are managing to bring all their forces to bear. So the Ravagers actually from Exploit are going to be torn apart. This is nice position-wise. This is an ideal position. Coming in for Savage Me, they should be able to take care of pretty much all of Exploit's army at very little cost. I mean, Exploit is coming into the rest of their stack defenses, which is what they want, obviously. But if the Halberds just go for it, they should be able to tear apart most of this. They've... Ah! They need to hold fire until the defenders use all their missiles, and then come in. Don't shoot until the defenders have used up all their missiles. That's the key thing, and actually... Oh, these are not in hold fire. That's not good. Yeah, the one thing about Halberds, too, is you gotta make sure they're on hold fire. Like, and then attack manually. I... Don't know if Savage Me is super confident in their micro skills, but that's the thing that makes Halberds absolutely terrifying when it comes to breaking defenses. Because they can run into a defender line, take all the missiles, just tank them, basically taking no damage in the process, and then retaliate and win. That is how Halberds get fights in their favor. But yeah, at this point, I kind of understand the Brawlers. I don't understand the continued use of Halberds. Exploit is going to be winning just by unit count. They have enough economy, they can start matching Sabbath's me cost for cost. And at this point, the halberds built up are really in the wrong position. I would love to see them go over to the northwest, because then it would tear apart everything. This one raptor is a no threat at all. 
Exploit might go for counterattack, but if they do, they lose all their base. The Brawlers will be able to take care of all the Ravagers, no problem. At this point, with only five Halberds left, that's not really even going to be an option to go northwest. So, it's... And, yeah, for those of you wondering, 0k is a game that requires as little mechanical skill as possible, in theory. But, in practice, things scale... Basically, units will, if put on fight move, like, you do that, you ta or attack move, I guess. Put on attack move, units will play fairly smart. Halberds are a micro-intensive unit, because they have armor when they're not firing. Like, they take, I think, a quarter damage when they're not firing. So, you want to make sure that... for Yeah. They take one quarter of the damage they normally would when they are, when they're holed up, not shooting. So you want to make sure that they're on hold fire, and actually some of them are. So these state toggles basically allow you to have your units kind of be smart and control themselves to an extent. And hold fire is, well, hold fire, and you want that for halberds. For most units, though, you can just attack, move, and they'll play it smart. They'll dodge projectiles. They'll, they'll avoid things that are too impossible, or at least they'll... They'll play smart within a combat. You want to make sure that you're not positioning them completely out of position. However, a lot of units do scale with micro. Like, the effective power of unit will scale with how much you are careful with it. Like, how much you make sure that all the guns are available to bear. So you're using, like, line move, which is a nice way of avoiding micro because you just one maneuver, like, right-click drag, and you automatically get units in the position you want them to be in. So stuff like that. But th that's the thing that makes it less micro-intensive. But at the same time, the game is designed so that those maneuvers, like those moves, those UI tools, are very useful. So the game is designed around, basically, a physics system is designed around units having friendly fire. It's designed around units being unable to shoot through each other in order to avoid friendly fire. It's designed in such a way that there's a lot of micro tools that help you. The game is trying to help you as much as possible, but it's also trying to present as many interesting problems to solve as possible in terms of tactics. So, as a result, micromanagement is not necessary at the low level, but it becomes really strong, especially with glaives and, to a lesser extent, daggers. Like, with several unit types, micro is really important, but the game is trying to do what it can. It's designed as much as possible to alleviate the mechanical requirements, but at the same time, it's designed to make sure that the state with those alleviated mechanical requirements is still as interesting as possible and as deep as possible. So... The skill floor is higher than, say, StarCraft when it comes to micromanagement, but the ceiling is at least as high. Like, the ceiling is still really high. It's not its not like you can just attack, move, and be done with it, and necessarily be done with it. Your opponents will still be able to take advantage of that situation. But yeah, if you're worried about micromanagement, I wouldn't recommend the Hovercraft or Jumpbot factories... But otherwise, for the most part, you'll be able to get away with just attacking, attack moving. If you make enough money, if you if you win the economy game, you will be fine. Anyway, back to the game itself, though. Sabbath me, mainly at this point, it's unit type counters. Like, Halberds are not doing a great job. They aren't firing quickly enough. They're getting hit on too many sides. They aren't able to do much unless they can swarm in and get a bunch of alpha. Finally, we see scalpels, which at least get the range advantage to get rid of the levelers. But at this point, exploit basically has the game. So, with this, yeah, I'd say the main issue was halberds were used way too long. They are great for dealing with defenses, they're great for running into entrenched positions and breaking them apart, because they can run in there, take all the hits, and then retaliate after they attack. And, I mean, the hold fire is good. That's You want to do that. That's how halberds should be used. But against levelers, raptors, against a bunch of frontline assault units, don't bother. The halberds will not live long enough once they start shooting. They don't deal enough damage to out-damage the assault units, and they're still quite expensive. Like, that's 240 compared to 250. The Ravager is the same cost, but way more effective. And at the same time, Leveler is also the same cost. Once again, firing a lot more powerful projectiles. Like, this is 150 damage compared to 220 damage from the Leveler. The DPS is about the same, but Leveler is also splash damage. And Leveler is also, like I said, splash damage a bit weaker as a result for direct damage. Ravagers, on the other hand, they deal... Okay, 105 damage per second, but they have much larger range... Then the halberd's like 200. So they can hit far sooner. They can move, I think, a little bit faster, actually. No, they're a little bit slower. But they also have way more HP. So the DPS difference is small, but the actual like shots-to-kill difference is massive. 
Like, the time to heal difference between the two, the Ravagers win every time. So that's just the thing. You can't win a Ravager versus Halberd fight equal cost. Ravagers will win. So that's the main thing I, I could say. Scalpels are a great choice. It just took a while to get there. Had that been in sooner, it would have probably helped out a lot. So yeah, that's the other thing about this game, is that the physical properties of units, projectiles, and projectile speed, and their health as well, like, that stuff is really important. And roughly speaking, each unit has a type, and halberds kind of go away from the type system, but most units are either raiders, riot units, or skirmishers. Raiders are beaten by riot units for the most part, skirmishers beat riots for the most part, and raiders will typically be able to beat skirmishers. I say typically because, depending on numbers and terrain and positioning, there can be differences, but as a rough rule, raiders beat skirmishers, skirmishers beat riots, riots beat raiders. As you see right now, we have a bunch of Scorchers coming in to help get rid of some of this stuff. They will have a... well, there's too few of them, really, that's the thing. There's not enough to actually deal with this. It's the right idea, it's just the wrong numbers and the wrong positioning. Like, economy is still quite important. And Savage Me has actually got a fairly strong setup for their economy right now. Exploit is a bit ahead. Also, Exploit's managed to get a cutoff going on here, so there's no easy way for the, there's no way for the Air Force to come down here to support. So the south side is cut off from air support. The north side is taking most of the damage anyway. And Exploit still has a much healthier economy than Savage Me. I mean, Savage Me has got a healthier energy economy, but nowhere near as much metal. So Exploit coming in here, they also have the attrition advantage, so they have no problems coming in here, losing a few units here and there. That's not going to be a big deal for them. I expect at this point Exploit will probably just set up a bunch of Scorchers, like Scorcher darts, coming in here, probably just to distract everything as much as possible. Like to push through, distract the Halberds, distract the Scalpels, and then rush in and tear everything apart. Once this is gone, Savage Me is going to throw in the towel. And there it is. There's the assault coming in. This is probably going to be an exploit. Might oh, they should be able to get in here? Yeah, the halberds will be going down pretty quick. Actually, the halberds doing a great job tanking by not firing. I mean, the scout, the scorchers have to be careful here. They, I don't know why exploit is not going around the side though. But the halberds are actually doing a wonderful job. If exploit had gone around the side, had gone north and realized, oh, this is an opening where there's no halberds blocking, they could have taken out several scalpels and possibly gone behind. But the thing is. They don't want to be rushing in with the Scorchers straight to the Scalpels, because if they do that, then the, Scor the Halberds will come around. They'll just they'll start shooting. But even then, it's not much. And even then, without the Scalpel's support, the Halberds will go down. Like I said, Scorchers do basically get a complete field day on Halberds, because Halberds can't damage them that quickly. And the Halberds can't really shoot if they don't want to take damage, and the Scorchers will be able to out-damage the Halberds quickly enough. But at this point, Savage Me is actually pushing forward quite nicely. Having gotten rid of a few waves of Halber or sorry, a few waves of Scorchers from Exploit, they seem to have renewed confidence. And actually, they can take out all these Crashers. That's going to be quite the opening. Because at this entire time, we've had this Quill over in the south side just building with defenses, slowly but surely creeping along the southern side of the map. Which is a bit of a slow way of doing things, but it is working. And at this point, with this breakthrough coming in from Savage Me, as long as they can rebuild all this metal extractors, which is a huge deal, and I pointed out several times, rebuilding metal extractors separates great players from good players. Or good players from great players. The great players always rebuild metal extractors. Always, always, always. Because you want to make sure that you are keeping your static economy fairly healthy. Now, like, Savage Me's Reclaim is doing fine right now, but that's still kind of risky. And at this point, ooh, the Banshees were not a great option. I mean, there's not... There are no flails, unfortunately, so the Scalpels are still going to take heavy losses, but... The Banshee should be torn to pieces as a result. Savage Me is actually really turning this attrition around. Unfortunately, I think the Banshees are going to be their undoing. Without having flails or anything, there's no easy way for these Scalpels to be able to take care of both Banshees and Scorchers. But we might still see... The Halberds should be attacking now. We might still see this tor completely fall apart. One of the Halberds does go down to the Caretaker dying. The second Caretaker dying won't be able to take out any more Halberds, but the Scalpels are going down in the process... So, while the extra build power has been removed, the actual factories are still in position, and the Halberds won't be able to tear them apart anytime soon. 
I think that's going to be it. Unfortunately, having no flails, that kind of doomed the assault. But right now, actually, the assault could still come in. It still could be another one that still could do the damage. And this halberd's just distracting the banshees rather nicely, too, and getting great information as well. Savits me, if they assault again right now, there's nothing. There is nothing on the field. This is it. They have a massive opening. They can come in here if they have two flails, or one or two flails, or even just a flail. Just build a flail. Build a flail, and that's it. Game over. I mean, the Scorcher here is doing a bit of a number, and also, like I said, rebuild your rebuild your static metal extractors. Bu rebuild metal extractors is huge, especially with these idle quills here. Like, rebuilding metal extractors is a big deal and needs to be done. But mostly, get a flail. Getting one flail... One flail. One flail will get rid of all these Banshees, no problem. There's really nothing else the, ho the Hovercraft Factory has to deal with Banshees. They don't have any... But I guess Mace kind of works, but it, most factories, they'll riot units, will be able to take care of Banshees, no problem. Gunship, sorry, Hovercraft, not really one of them. Anyway, one Blastman getting in here should be able to deal a lot of damage. Get rid of all these wind generators, actually. Like, chain kills. Chain kills taking out a massive chunk of exploits wind economy. To the point that they're actually not able to... They have no storage, do they? But yeah, they're going to be accessing metal as a result, but yeah, they have no storage. I didn't even realize that. Exploit has not rebuilt storage this entire game. I mean, Savage Me, they are accessing, mostly because for some reason this caretaker is not trying to help the Hovercraft Factory, which is actually getting stuff built on it. But, that aside, Savage Me is... Ugh, they just need one flail. They just need one flail. I don't... And, or to attack. They need to one flail and to attack. Like, uh, Sabbath me as... Like, this is kind of their game to win at this point. After hitting the main base, after dealing all the damage to the army, it's getting harder and harder, especially when they're going to lose this fusion plant. But, it's like, if they had a flail, this wouldn't have happened. They had this game. They just need to build one or two flails, take care of all the banshees that could possibly come in. There's the flail. There we go. And maces actually do do the trick. But yeah, and then just send this army... Well, not anymore. I wouldn't say send it now, but back after they hit the first attack, sending another attack in. Actually, even now, yeah, come to think of it, the timing is really good because the masons are here just being built up to use build power. Exploit is not building any military units. They're just banshees. The fellas to take care of it. If this attack happens, if Savage Me goes for it right now, they will win the game. So, this is... This is still kind of... Okay, why is it not happening? I don't know. Sorry, it just... I guess I am seeing this from the from this perspective of a spectator. But the thing is, Sabbath Me does know there's not much up. They might suspect military, because most players would have gone for a bunch of military, not a bunch of workers. So Sabbath Me might know what's up. And they have the units to deal with even whatever military has been built up. But they aren't going for static economy. I... Their quills are... Well, one of them is building some stuff up, but they have several more. I mean, they're rebuilding some of their build power, but they don't have anywhere near the metal needed. This build power is wasted. They don't have the metal. Like, you can only use as much build power as you have metal, so... Right now, this is 60 build power, or 70 build power, actually, once this last character is done. Onto the Hovercraft Factory with 20 metal and 30 energy, that's not gonna work. You only use build power with if you have metal or energy to use it with. So this is going to help out if Savage Me re-expands and reclaims a bunch of stuff and gets much more energy back, rebuilds that fusion plant, for instance. But otherwise, no. Anyway, there's the flails. And actually, yeah, it's a good thing I said more than one flail, because that's definitely needed. And Exploit still throws in the towel. Savage Me has this. Like I said, they had this. As soon as they attacked, they had this game, and they do indeed have this game. Bit of a roundabout way, but Savage Me does take it. Mostly because at the very end there, Exploit did not build up. Like, they went with the same mistake as Savage Me. They went for a lot of build power. They didn't go for a lot of ow, a lot of their economy back. They didn't go for a lot of military. And they didn't have much of a ground army after the early attack. I mean, they had a nice Ravager level or army. They just didn't go for that again, because that was doing a great job until the scalpels came up. And then after that point, they lost a lot of Scorchers to basically running headlong into Savage Me's army. Both players made that mistake. They're running headlong to their opponent's armies rather than trying to fight where the armies weren't. 
I can kind of get the temptation because you want to get rid of your opponent's forces and win that way, and you're afraid of maybe a counterattack. But at the same time, if you're attacking where your opponent has something they value, they're going to chase after you. And because of the way the physics system works, you want your opponents chasing after you. You hit them more than they hit you. So that's something which we don't see enough of. But anyway, also the excess from X. Holy crap, 23,000. No wonder. Exploit produced 64.9k metal, used 41.5k. So Savage Me still had a metal use advantage the entire game, even though they had metal production disadvantage for the majority of the game. Wow. Okay, that explains a lot, actually. I mean, mostly that was because the commander was lost. Exploit never rebuilt storage after losing their commander. So they had all this metal that wasn't being used because they didn't have enough build power in their main base to use the metal that they got, and they couldn't store it for later. So yeah, that's... I don't know why that happened. Anyway, next match is going to be probably a much more... much cleaner match. Though a bit of a longer match. It'll be Dying Friend and Lamadeus on Hide and Seek, so stay tuned for that. It'll be up in a couple minutes.